Hi there. My name is Jennifer Tree Fellner, and I am the Director of Communications, Marketing, and Social Media for the Diocese of Palm Beach. It is my pleasure to present to you today for the NCEA 2021 Convention about communication planning and using data-driven techniques to do just that. Although I miss being with you in person, you can always reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn so that we can continue the conversation from today. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started on today. Great. So again, today's presentation will concentrate on building a communications plan using data driven techniques. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I live in um, Port St. Lucie, Florida, and I have an accreditation in public relations. I'm also a certified public relations counselor through FPRA, and I have a crisis communication certification um, through the Public Relations Society of America. I am a member of not only FPRA and PRSA, but the Catholic Press Association. And most recently, I was asked to be on the Stetson University Disruptive Leadership Advisory Board, and I'm a proud past member of the NCEA Advisory Council. I am a graduate of John Carroll High School, as is my husband, Joey. We've been married for 19 years. We have a little girl, Olivia Grace. She is 14, attends St. Anastasia Catholic School, will be at John Carroll High School next year. And we have a wonderful bonus kid, Edwin Thomas, and he is 25 and he graduated from John Carroll High School. War Eagle, I graduated from Auburn University and I love to travel and volunteer and laugh and just try to leave the world a better place. All right, so let's talk about today's presentation we are going to discuss how um, effective communications are the result of a planned and deliberate program designed to market a school for image enrollment and resources. Um, also, effective communications is the result of a proactive philosophy which seeks to address issues in a timely and straightforward fashion, guided at all times by the mission of the school. I'll be reviewing some specific things that you can implement on your school's campus or in your diocese as well. The goals for today, by the end of this presentation, I would love for you to understand how to use an effective communications plan and also um, utilize the comprehensive plan uh, to benefit your diocese using the information that is provided. So why do we need this communications plan? Because we want to ensure that research is going to be completed. We want to establish some goals and really clarify that. Set measurable objectives, um, organize the planning process. We really want to make sure that we set time to evaluate the results and also um, create standards for operations. And we're going to do a little deep dive into each of those. So what exactly our communications. What are we doing? How, what does that mean? Um, what it means is we are imparting or exchanging information by speaking, writing, or using a different medium um, and conveying those sharing of ideas. One thing that I like to use um, in communications planning as a tactic is the use of social media and utilizing that two-way communication. Um, we're going to look at some different options that we have for schools and dioceses, so internal and external stakeholders. When we start looking at our plan and what that's going to look like, we want to make sure that we address these two separate areas. So we've got the internal um, stakeholders, which would be your students, your faculty and staff, your school advisory council, your parents and guardians um, of current students, and then also looking externally. So the alumni and the alumni parents. Um, prospective students and their families, community members and business and civic leaders as well. For those that work at a diocese, um, we want to look at who are those stakeholders, internal and external. So this internal group would be coworkers, school communication staff, priests, and parish communication staff. 
External would be community members, parishioners, school communities, donors, ministries, and office communities. I also put on display here on your screen, um, just an example of a flyer that we made um, for our Office of Communications. And I would encourage you to do this for your school or your diocese that lists out the different ways that we can communicate with our faith community. So for us, we utilize website, social media, um, our Florida Catholic paper and the TV mass. Um, so this is just an example and I'll throw these in there every once in a while of kind of best practices I would encourage you to do for your school, um, kind of a communicate with us sheet um, or for your diocese. So let's keep in mind during our presentation today, we know that you can market schools for image enrollment and resources. And on your screen, you're going to see a little bit of an overview. This is an example of something that we utilized on a marketing campaign. We titled Something Greater. And this is a very specific overview of what the visual identity of the posts that our schools were going to utilize. So again, just a little nugget for you um, to enjoy and maybe for you to do is when you're creating a marketing campaign, um, I'm very specific. So this is where the branding standards are going to be. This is the text you can use. Here's a Word document with the text you can use. So um, just a good option there. Um, and that campaign was very successful for us. We ran it throughout the um, school year. Um, and that would be two years ago. So why do people choose Catholic schools? Um, for a perception of a better academic quality, those religious values, having a moral compass, uh, number three, safety, security, and discipline. And then the value added opportunities, the leadership opportunities that you can provide at the school level. I do a lot of work with generational trends and really understanding who our audience is. This um, slide that you see here breaks it down from Gen Z, Millennial, Gen X, and Boomers. And down below, you're going to see exactly which generations are on which social sites. And why do I show you this? Because as we're making this communication plan, I want you to start thinking about, oh, okay, well, this is identifying the fact that, you know, Gen Z is more prevalent on YouTube. Okay, so when I'm making a communication piece or a video, I need to understand that it is those families, the Gen Z generation, um, that would be more apt to see that, where if I want to talk to millennials, I know that I should concentrate a little bit more on Facebook. So take some time, look at this slide. Um, you can hit pause, um, but also you can look at who's where um, and on each of these sites. I am doing a separate presentation just on social media, um, and we go into this in more detail. But think about this as we go through, and you can identify for yourselves and your schools what would be the best fit for you. So the template for the communications plan and using that data um, that I would recommend is using that RPIE methodology. Um, and I used a Word document and I just started at the top and I broke everything down into different parameters. So we're talking about the research, then we go into the planning and within the planning, and I'm gonna give specific examples, but you wanna establish your goals your objectives, your strategies, and your tactics. And then you're gonna implement that information and then you're gonna evaluate it and you're gonna compare the results to your objectives. Did you meet those objectives? If not, why did you um, exceed those objectives? Great, tell us about that. And then of course you have to remember your budget. So I do incorporate budget also into the planning section too. So let's look carefully at research. So it's a systematic gathering of information uh, to describe and understand a situation. So you're checking your assumptions about publics and perceptions and also checking the public relations consequences. So who is your target audience? What do you want them to do? What messages do you want? And how do you see the results? I've gotten so used to working on these research elements that we're looking at formal and informal, primary and secondary, not that you have to go into the those specific elements there, but I do want you to be aware of making sure you're analyzing before you pull the trigger on um, creating your plan. One way that you can do that is a communication survey. This is an example of a survey um, that we created here at the diocese that really just is asking people, how often do they wanna be 
in communication with us on what days. I did this at the school level too. Um, I worked at a Catholic high school for um, 13 years. That's where I say I got my street cred from. Um, but we would send out annual surveys that said, tell us if you get an e-newsletter, what day of the week you want that to come and at what time. And, you know, we found that, you know, Friday afternoons, people were more apt to read that e-newsletter from us. Um, but also, what do they want to see on social media? So if you're not doing a communication survey, I would suggest that you do one. You can do it through an electronic service, um, you know, MailChimp, SurveyMonkey, something like that. I think that's a wise idea um, to get a research base. Also, you want to do an audit of your content. Um, I've worked with schools before, and we've taken every piece of marketing material they have and we've laid it on the desk and be like, okay, well, there's eight greens here in your branding standards, or, you know, there's multiple Facebook pages that are listed that are incorrect. So we're doing a full audit of what that looks like of the print pieces, but then your social pieces um, as well. So for example, um, when I started here, I did a deep dive on every social media site that used the name Diocese of Palm Beach. And we eliminated some that were superfluous. We did not need them. They were not getting any traction. And we added some that we needed. So if you have um, an environment where there are multiple languages being spoken and you do not have a social media site designated for that language, I would encourage you to do that. Um, so we implemented a um, Hispanic um, page and it got more followers um, than any of our other pages <laughs> right out of the gates. Um, so do that audit of all your materials and then take the time to think through and research what are your marketing pillars. So what separates you from the competition? Why would someone choose your school over another school? Um, what are your areas of strength when it comes to Catholic identity, um, a safe campus, fair discipline, activities, do you have an alpha program? Do you have a school leadership? Do you have AP or IB? Um, and then school-wide initiatives that are unique to you, service drives, um, if there's something diocesan-wide. So those are the research elements that you really wanna look at. And then we move on to planning. So what do we think about with planning? What is going to be produced and why? So if you do the same thing every day, you're going to expect the same results. If you really want to make a robust communications plan, you kind of think out of that box. Why would I produce this? Why am I continuing um, to do something if it's not working? Um, who's going to distribute it and who's going to be responsible for creating it? And if you haven't made like a social media plan before where you're actually writing down who's responsible for which tasks, this will be a friendly reminder um, of how important that is so you make sure it gets done. And then is it reaching the right target audience? An element of that planning are creating those objectives. So we wanna make sure that those are smart objectives, so specific, measurable, attainable, audience specific, relevant, uh, results oriented and time specific. And the reason why I like to make these um, that are specific in terms of awareness or attitude or action that need to be made is that you can go back after you've implemented this plan and see if it works. So comparing those results to these objectives. Um, one thing I would encourage you to do in this planning process is making sure you have a branding or identity guide. So I have two examples on the screen. One is from the high school I used to work at. Um, and there were three different versions, you know, one for the main school, one for administration and, you know, color. Um, and so we had a whole identity kit just for that. And then we came, I came here to the diocese and, you know, we created one And here. You can see that's our color palette. Um, so your CMYK colors, et cetera. And I would say, you know, each are probably 10 pages. Um, and it goes into detail about what are those visual elements so that um, you're able to recognize everything from that school. I mentioned before, like eight greens. Well, there really should just be one green. So let's dial in, you know, what is that, those Pantone colors. Um, so if you don't have one, that's a great thing to do in the planning process. Another good way to do some planning is looking at a matrix of understanding your materials and your audiences. So here um, you can see that there's a lot of different things that you can do um, in looking at how often you're sending things weekly, quarterly, monthly, annually, who are they going to? And you can actually just take a little pencil 
and mark down, okay, it looks like that every week I send something to the parents, but I don't send anything to the donors except for once a year. You know, if you're doing um, touch points with your alumni, how often you're doing them. So actually taking the time to fill out a matrix where you could put, you know, um, on the top end exactly who your target audiences are. And then as you're going down, you could put in everything that you do that's a touch point. So that's just a good example exercise that you could do after this um, as you're making your plan. I would encourage you to create a social media ambassador program. This is, um, I do a separate presentation just on this, but to give you a few little nuggets from it, this plan empowers folks that you trust to be your eyes, your ears, and your megaphone. Um, and what do I mean by that? Um, you're going to express to them what information you would like shared and then also hear from them. And you're going to capitalize on two things, that authentic endorsement from them and also the virality. The virality because you have selected people that have different social circles. And when they share a post from your school, it's going to go to their 500 Facebook friends. And you may say, you know, please join us for our golf tournament. They're going to share that post. And then you're going to ask them to say why they should go to the golf tournament. They may say, I went to the golf tournament last year. The food's great. It's a lot of fun, et cetera. And by doing that, not only is there virality in them sharing it, but there's authentic endorsement. So they are saying that they believe in that event. They believe in that product and why, which speaks volumes compared to us always saying, oh, go to the golf tournament because it's fun. But having someone endorse it is really important. So how do you create that? I mentioned that you find trusted liaisons. I do research on our social media sites to see who is active, who's using best practices in social media, um, who uses proper grammar, um, who's professional in their demeanor. Um, and then I would meet with them. We started the program with three, we grew it annually. Um, so we like, went from three, we went to six, we went to nine. And we train them on strategies. So I talk to them about how do you check in when you're on campus? How do you share content? Um, how do you take good video for social media? And we would meet once a month. And I learned their suggestions too. And, and you know, I told them it's a really important position. And I want to know their suggestions. Like, do we need to post more about athletics? Do we need to post more about academics? How could we post about the safety of our school? Um, and then I would watch what they post. So for example, I might say, our annual giving campaign kicks off today, please join us. And then I will watch using our analytics, them share that to their friends and say, last year I was a golden member and I really appreciated the benefits. I know my money was well spent. Please join this year in that process. Um, and then do study your analytics. Um, you'll see that you have a lot of growth in your engagement, um, and then you grow those ambassadors. So ways that you can use these folks um, would include the following. You can ask them to share content and add a sentence or two in their own words. Um, you can ask them to invite friends to events. So if you have created a Facebook event and you know that you personally are not friends with all 500 people you want to invent, you know, in social media, invite in social media, they probably are friends with that stakeholder group. So you say, please go in and on that event, invite your friends. Also to tag friends and posts. So you may post like a whole photo album from Grandparents Day, but you may only be able to tag a few of those um, people on Facebook. Have your ambassadors go in and they know who's who and they can tag those pictures for you. Um, you can ask them to review your page or do a Google review or a niche or greatschools.org or things like that. And then ask them to check in when they're on campus too. Since you already have those protocols in place, making the social media ambassador program, make sure that you parallel that to your parent ambassador program in real life or in person. And I know with COVID, we're all in different places in the United States listening to this and things look a little bit different everywhere. Um, but using those parent ambassadors um, through building relationships. And, and what that does is not only provide that ambassador for another family, but it also validates that value proposition to that parent. So if I'm going to be a parent ambassador at my daughter's school, 
I'm reading about their mission statement. I'm understanding what their marketing pillars are. So I can explain that to someone else. And I remind myself, wow, that is a great school. And here are why, you know, here are the reasons why. So it kind of re-recruits students and parents um, in that school pride. Another element of the planning would be making sure you have policies in place. So I'm a big fan of working smarter, not harder. Um, if you don't have like a policy on media relations, I would encourage you to do that. That's something that um, you can do at the diocesan level or have that in place at the school level. So people understand the policies there. Another example um, would be a social media administrator agreement. And you can see that here on the screen. Um, but basically, if you have anyone on campus that is operating a social media account, they need to sign this. And this form would include things like, you know, making sure that they're posting appropriately, spell checking everything. Um, they're not using images um, that go against any copyright infringements, et cetera, et cetera. They are upholding the mission of the school. And then you're making sure that you have the username and the password for that social media site. That's a problem that I've worked with multiple schools on and parishes that somebody started the page. We don't know the password. We have to petition Facebook now to make that change. So before those problems occur, make sure that you understand what the username or password is. You're gonna make a photocopy of that. Your principal's gonna have a copy. Someone else is gonna have a copy and they've signed their name and dated it as well as their boss so that you can hold them accountable. Say they go rogue and they post inappropriate things. Well, now you can pull that down and you also can say, listen, I know you signed this paper that you want to do that. And then you can take the appropriate actions. Purposeful preparation. So as you are looking at your planning process for this communications um, plan that you're making, think about it. Do you have a Vimeo page? Do you use Google Photos? How are you going to share things? Are you using OneDrive? Do you have a YouTube account? So start thinking about ways that you could really um, communicate and how are you going to do that in reality. We started a Vimeo account this year. I highly recommend it. Google Photos is another wonderful way of sharing things. Um, Microsoft Teams has a lot of programs available. So whatever is best for you, um, Google Drive, a lot of schools are using. So think about how you're going to prepare for this and what it's going to look like um, when you go to implement this plan. And that brings us to implementation. So one thing I would encourage you to do when you're implementing this plan is to repurpose content. Um, so for example, when I was creating e-newsletters for our school, I would type the information in a Word document. It would be proofread, it would be just right. And then we would copy and paste that into MailChimp so it would go out. But we'd also copy and paste nuggets of that to go on social media, to post on our website, to present at PTO meetings and things like that. On the screen, you can see an example of something we repurpose where our bishop writes a really nice column once a week and they're long columns. Um, they're great, but I know people are very visual and I know people like short little things. So we pull a sentence or two out and we call those signature statements and those are derived from the columns. We're not recreating something. We're not asking Bishop to write more. We're just repurposing. So I would encourage you to do that in this implementation phase. Next, I'll talk about a few little ideas on the next few slides. So one of the ideas um, would be to have these state of the school messages. If you're not already doing that, I would encourage you to do that. Um, so your head of school, your principal, your pastor is going to say, okay, here's where we are. Here's our enrollment. Here, three things are doing great. Here's our ideas for this year. Um, and having that transparency. The second would be an annual report. Um, you can do it print, you can do it digital, you can do both, um, but really being able to provide something tangible. And you can also use that as a marketing material as well. Uh, if you're not having parents skilled meetings and they're called different things, parent society, PTO, um, via Zoom or in person, um, I would encourage you to do that, whether it's once a month, or every six weeks, but so you continue to have that buy-in from that important stakeholder group. 
Um, some other ideas for implementation. Um, so on your screen, you can see this is a cute idea. This was um, a graduate profile and just some great branding. This um, was done through John Carroll after I left, but I really liked it. Um, it says, I am a RAM. And it talks a little bit about what that graduate is doing at this time. Um, if you did that communication survey, make sure you communicate those results. So you want to be able to tell people, yes, this is what, you know, 85% of our families feel plugged in and they really like where they are um, at the school. And last I put on there, justification of purchase decision letters. So what does that mean? That means that throughout the year you have organized different members of your faculty and staff that are going to write and share letters that pertain to different aspects of your school. So it could be one in the fall from your athletic director that is reminding families about the vibrant athletic programs that you have. It could be one in the spring that's from your theater director that is thanking everyone for attending the most recent play and watch the next one on Zoom as it happens because of COVID. Um, the next one could be from a guidance counselor talking about um, the colleges that the students are getting into. And so you can kind of use your marketing pillars and then use different people within your campus to write these letters and send them out to the family. So it's justifying the purchase decision. So when someone's handing you, you know, $7,000, $8,000, $10,000 for a Catholic school tuition, what are they getting back? You're justifying that purchase decision. Some more ideas for implementation, um, parish um, presentations. So I used to go to the um, religious education classes at the parishes and give them presentations and talk to them a little bit about what we had to offer. Um, we also tried to engage students during the break. So the first graphic that you see there on your left is this hashtag Ram Pride Worldwide competition. And I would give out prizes for people that traveled. Now, this is different in the time of COVID, um, but the bottom line is if you submitted a photo that was the most creative taken or for us, we did different travel pieces, but you could make that work for your school um, and could be the best selfie. But what they're doing is they're engaging with you even when they're off campus. This is a wonderful thing to do also in the summer. They're going to submit those photos to you. And then you could have like your student um, social media ambassadors vote um, for who would win. And, you know, there's big prizes like a free jeans day or, you know, Starbucks gift card or something like that. Um, and the last is templates in place um, to share. So we have a meet the seminarians profile that we did. Um, the template stays the same. All that changes is the name, the photo, and a little bit of information, hobbies, and quotes. So if you're doing this for your faculty and staff, for your alumni, just having those templates in place so you're not reinventing the wheel, um, you can really provide a lot of good information. Next on implementation, and then we'll move to evaluation. I'm big into social media strategy meetings. So whether you're doing them on campus, to understand what's happening or you're doing them for your diocese. So on the far right, you can see a little calendar. It's a Word document. And I would just type in what we're posting on what days and we would have different departments or for you, it could be the different clubs um, and sports kind of write in on this Word, Word calendar or Google, whatever you want to say what they are going to have on a certain day and how they can provide that information for you. Could be clubs as well. Then you fill in things that are static or they're evergreen, or you could promote different things on those days. So it could be a reminder about re-enrollment. It could be a reminder about your AP programs or um, pictures of a day that you know will be, you know, coming up soon. So creating those meetings and really talking about that social media strategy. Um, educating those involved. So reminding folks that are your internal audiences of what you're doing to communicate and how. And then last, a platform to obtain information. The screenshot you see on your far left is um, just a screen capture from our website where we have a platform on our website for folks to utilize um, the resources that we have. So your branding standards, making sure those are available. Um, 
if there are links to your main diocese page, to USCCB, to NCEA, being able to provide easy um, links for them to obtain information, I think is a great idea when you look at implementation of this communications plan. Next, we look at evaluation. So uh, first, you know you want to budget properly for all strategies. That's important. Um, and follow a timeline to ensure that all tactics will be completed. So you're going to assess, is what happened consistent with my objective? And where did it fall short and why? And then I would break those numbers into percentages too. And then you can compare that to industry standards. So one of your goals was to create an e-newsletter. Well, that was the open rate. Well, what's the national open rate? What's the state open rate for those emails? Um, so really doing a deep dive in that evaluation. And sometimes we're so busy doing life that we forget to stop and have that evaluation time period. Here is an example of the template um, that I've used before. And I just started typing research, planning, implementation, evaluation, and then I have addendum items and then fleshing out each of those specific things. So you're going to go to your vision, your mission, your goals, your strategies, your tactics. Um, and I've kind of broken them down here on this slide so you can see them exactly um, and how they would look. If you have specific questions about this template or anything in this presentation, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I want to also thank you for your energy and for your time for being here. Um, you know, I really appreciate it because I know that your time is valuable and um, you know, it's important really for all of us at this time um, to be able to connect with one another and to make this possible. So um, thank you again so much for being here today. I sure do appreciate it. And um, at this time, I'll stop sharing my screen. You can find me on LinkedIn or on Twitter. And um, thank you for participating in NCEA 2021. You can send me a little tweet um, or find me on LinkedIn and we can always talk further. Thank you so much and I hope you have a blessed day.